This $25 DIY weather station is tracking live weather fall, temperature, humidity and pressure. And it costs less than a tank of gas to build. Hey robot makers, I'm making a secret Santa gift for my friend Dr John. It's a complete weather station with a custom rain gauge. It also has a Pimroni Enviro weather and runs on MicroPython. Let's take a look. Before we get into the build, I want to tell you where this idea came about. At Maker Central 2025, I met with John and Dan. We discussed doing a secret Santa this year, including John Bunce as well. Maker Central is a really great place to meet up with makers, see really cool stuff, listen to talks, and also do some hands-on workshops. You can see Frankly Built and Emily the Engineer there as well. Colin Furs is usually there bringing along some of his inventions and builds. You can see him just there with uh, Tom Lamb. And I like this because you get to speak directly to some makers and also meet some of your friends in person. So the way this works, we have four YouTubers. We've got Dr. John, we have Dan Makes Things, we have John from Steamhead, and we also have myself, Kevin McAleer. And each of us is going to make a gift. We're going to make a video about it. We're going to pass that gift to the next person in the chain. They're going to make a gift for the next person in the chain, and it goes round and round. So after watching my video, definitely check out Dr. John's and you'll see him receive my gift. So I've designed a rain gauge. Let me take you through how this has been put together. So there's a couple of different components to this. There's the collector on the top. This is where the rain will fall into and fall down that little hole. And if I just pivot this round, you'll also see there's little gaps at the sides for the rain to fall out of. So let's just remove that collector for a second. And then you can see inside we have this little pivot and this can sort of move up and down and pass the little sensor. You can see the magnet can then pass that little sensor that we have there. And each time it does that, we can count that as one tip. And then we can calculate how much rain has fallen by how much rain is stored in these little buckets. And therefore, when it tips, we know how much has been collected. So let's just uh, remove that pivot for a second. We can see we have the little reed switch. There's the reed switch. We zoom in on our reed switch. I'll try to model this as accurately as possible, just so everything fits together. You can even see we have the little the little two metal strips that touch each other if a magnet comes close to each other. Let's just remove that. So then we have, this is the base, and if we remove the base we've then got this little mounting arm, which I've also 3D printed. The idea is this can then be mounted to a pole or something like that outside. So one of the challenges I've had with this is just getting this pivot to be really friction free. Um, it isn't friction free at the moment, I'm just using a screw, so really I need something that uh, kind of a smooth bolt that I can put through there so that the the water because it's really really delicate there's not very much weight to the water we just need just enough weight in there and these are kind of designed as a triangle so they're offset so the more water that goes in it reaches a kind of tipping point as it were and that they will then tip and then we can record that that's uh, that's one bucket that's been emptied so some critical calculations in here is how far does this tip and when it tips it does that edge make contact with the base so if i go back to the original sketch for this let's go to the pivot let's go to the original sketch you can see that i've worked out so you can see there when this moves down we can calculate where it's going to touch we can also just change some of the dimensions in here so the walls of these are not absolutely straight inside they've got a bit of a bit of a slant to them and that's just to, to offset the, the water slightly so that it has that tipping factor compared to the pivot point which is just there. So again we can see that pivot just sort of teasing past that uh, reed centre there and we can also see where the water comes in from the top. Using a sectional analysis tool here so you can kind of go through the, the model one bit at a time. When this is tipped we can see that the water will go into that right hand channel once that gets full it will then tip to the other side. I guess ideally you want these to be kind of horizontal when they're when they're up but it's not too bad as long as it does the tipping and we can measure how much which we'll get to in a minute. Okay so I've got some super glue I have some reed switches these are really cool. So you can just about make out there there's two tiny pieces of metal and when a magnet comes near them they'll close closing the circuit so it's a very simple on off switch and it's triggered by a magnet so i've got these neodymium magnets these are tiny little magnets so if we bring this close to the reed switch it will close 
this little structure. In fact, I've actually created several versions of this because um, I've created several versions of this only because I can't get the magnet to stick in there because the hole was a little bit of the wrong size. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull two magnets off here. These are so powerful, quite difficult to tear apart. Okay, so I'm just going to put them there. These other ones back. I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to put another one behind it just to hold it in place while I glue it in place. Let's do this. Trying to avoid getting super glue all of my hands because once you get that on, it's really difficult to get it off. Into place, I knew that would happen, it's flipped over. Right, so I need to just push that into place with something. Right, so while that's uh, drying, let's have a look what we need to do next. So I've got one of these V switches, I've bent this into place. And I have this little holder, so this is going to be the uh, kind of seesaw holder and the rain will drip into there and the idea is that it'll tip when it uh, gets full. So we're going to place this little reed, place this little reed sensor just there and the idea is that magnet will kind of tease it as it ticks past and each time it tips, you might be able to hear this on camera. I'll just record this next to the microphone. Each time I, I tip that, it's actually just making a short connection and we can measure that with a microcontroller. Here's one I made earlier. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to load up Thonny. Let's open up this monitor, let's run the code and then let's go over to so at least I'm bringing the magnets close. We should get an elevated count. See if we can bring that up a little bit. So bring it close. The switch goes to a one. There we go. Bit of a delayed reaction there. So we put it near it and then it ticks. Also next we need to glue this in place as well. We need this to be. So what I'm going to do is just put a few blobs of super glue on there and then hopefully that will stay in place. Okay, so I've nipped out to uh, B&Q, which is our local DIY shop, and I have got some of these 2mm by 40mm pins. So the idea is this is going to be a pivot. Get that in there. And now this should pivot a little better. Now the issue I'm getting now is that when that magnet gets close, it's sticking to the reed switch. So what I need to do is have some spacers spaced out. These. This is going to be fiddly. <laughs> so the issue I'm having now is it still has enough wiggle room to be able to stick. It does look like I'm going to need a washer behind that one as well. Right, that's better. It's still sticking on the top. Maybe if we move that other magnet, it's any better. So we need a way so that the uh, the pin doesn't come out. I have got some additional super glue for that. Okay, let's see how this has got on. It's still a little bit, a little bit wonky, but I think it'll be okay. Right, so next what we need to do is the Enviro Weather uses these RJ11 connectors. Bought this cable from a local DIY store, so what we need to do is just chop this wire and then use the middle two, the green and the red. So uh, let's get to that. And then we can wire these up to here, stuff the cable through that little hole, and then when we mount it on here, this is a previous version, we will be able to wire this up. I've got a couple of these just in case I mess it up. So I think we probably need no more than that amount of cable. Let's see, chop. 
Like so. So if we open up this cable, let's have a see what's inside. We can see that there's a red and a green cable. Now my understanding is we only need to use these two middle ones. And it doesn't matter which one goes to which part of the sensor, it's simply just closing a circuit. Okay, so all we need to do is just connect up these to here. I think we need a little bit more, a bit more wire. So let's just push this up through there. Probably need some kind of wire tie or something around that just to hold it in place. And then we're simply going to have one of these connect to this one and one of them connect to that one. Let me go and get the soldering iron. Okay, let's get this thing wired up. I always find soldering is a lot easier if you use a bit of flux. Should sort of hold on to each other. This environment weather to the rain side. It should be able to read when we tip the bucket. I've got the Pimeroni Enviro Weather plugged in and I can see on here my little program I basically just change which pin it is that our read switch is connected to. The Enviro Weather uses pin 10 for the, the rain sensor. So I've just updated the code a little bit. So if we now run this and I then tip it, we can see we get a little count increasing as I tip it there. So I think what I need to do next is just secure this cable here with a zip tie just so that it doesn't actually fall off or get tugged. It's a rather big bunch of cables here. I put a second one on. Okay, so next I just need to remove this old one. Someone is at the Someone's at the front door doorbell. I might actually design this so that it can hold the Stevenson screen as well. And this is what a Stevenson screen looks like. This one has a little micro bit inside. So we can use this battery pack to power the Pimeroni weather. And we can put all that inside. Stevenson screen. So we simply need a hole big enough for that to go through. Just have to uh, cut that out a little bit. So next up we need to measure exactly how much water does each bucket take and then we can multiply that by the surface area of the of the container and that will give us the actual millimetres of water that this can measure every time it tips. So it's reliably tipping now which is really great and I'm just going to take a measurement. I've got a little pipette and it has a little measure or a little gauge on the side so we can actually measure how much water tips at a time. And it's four and a half millimetres. So the details of the design that I've made. This is the base that holds the bucket and the reed switch. It's got two holes in it for the reed switch. Next we have the bucket that holds the water. Each bucket can hold 4.5 millilitres of water. The collector captures the water. You can see there the collection area is 60 by 110 millimetres, which is 66 centimetres squared. So to calculate how much water it is per tip, it's 4.5 millilitres divided by 66 centimetres squared, which is 0 0.068 millimetres per tip. And finally we have the mounting arm, and this can be used to attach this to a pole. So it's time to package this up, send it to, to Dr John, and hopefully he'll really enjoy this and be able to get his weather station up and running.
So let's unbox the gift from John. It says here, Dear Kevin, please find and close your secret Santa gift. Having removed all the bubble wrap, sit it on the table and firmly pull out the plastic strip labelled, firmly pull out the plastic strip or something similar, I can't remember what I wrote. You'll need some loose change, any coins will do, washes left over from your wonderful robotics projects will also suffice. Hope you and yours have a wonderful Christmas. Regards, John. Steamhead. Wow. It's the thing. your inquiry. Allow me now to consult with the ether. Ah yes. You shall sit in a chair at home, a cafe, a train car, and feel it curiously warm. So no one appears to have left it. This is no ordinary residue. Someone who has once made a decision that resembles yours sat there hours or years before. Their thoughts echo faintly. In the day that follows, watch for a repeated phrase or mirrored movement. You are being given a glimpse into another's consequences and a chance to choose differently. That is just absolutely incredible. Blown away with this. John, you've really outdone yourself with this one. I'm a bit blown away with this. Oh my goodness. Look how amazing this is. <laughs> Thank you for your inquiry. Just look at the workmanship on that, the craftsmanship. Absolutely incredible. Look at that. Brass, steampunk aesthetic. Uh, yeah. Steamhead. Absolutely love this. This is just amazing, John. Though it may seem like the wow. The blinking is incredible. The eyes are so fast. I was thinking, is it an eyelid? But it's the eyes themselves that rotate. So cool. That is just amazing, John. Really, really blown away with that. I feel like my weather station is a bit uh, subpar compared to that. So definitely check out John EA's video next. His is next in the chain. You'll see him receiving my gift and he'll be working on his own for Dan. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you next time. Bye for now.